Hi, my name is Glenn Weinreb, and today we're going to explore what a national climate plan might actually look like. A plan is essentially a list of actions designed to achieve a specific goal. In the case of climate, a reasonable goal is to prevent runaway climate change. Reaching this goal requires two major efforts. One is decarbonization, and the other is reflecting sunlight back into outer space. Each of these efforts primarily involves two areas. One is R&D, and the other is operations. So when talking about costs, we're looking at four categories. These categories can be laid out in a four-row budget table, an example of which is displayed here. In this table, years are shown in columns, and values are in units of dollars cost per American per year. As one can see, the first two rows cover decarbonization, while the last two rows focus on reflecting sunlight. In this example, the left side shows the early years, while the right side shows the later years. If decarbonization is done in lowest cost order, the early years would be relatively easy, and with additional R&D, in theory, the later years could be easy too. Additional R&D can be broken down into multiple categories, where each is referred to as an R&D package. For example, one R&D package might focus on nuclear fission, while another focuses on geothermal. Each R&D package can further be divided into focus areas, where each area is supported by an R&D fund. Shown here is an example list of R&D packages, and shown here is an example list of R&D funds inside of one R&D package. Within a climate plan, an R&D budget table can show the cost of each R&D package over time and a budget table for each R&D package can show the cost of each R&D fund over time. Our lab business plan suggests eight R&D packages with roughly seven R&D funds in each. This document is open source, which means anyone can edit for free and define their own packages and funds. Also, a funding source can focus on any of these at any level and have any organization within reason manage the development. R&D that solves the entire climate problem would be too much for one organization to handle. Therefore, we need to develop a system that coordinates multiple universities, foundations, and governments to do R&D to the extent required to prevent runaway climate change. We'll discuss this more in later videos. In some cases, the green option costs less than the carbon-based option, while in other cases, the green option costs more. When the green option costs less, decarbonization is easy and it moves forward in a natural manner. However, when the green option costs more, government intervention is often needed. This includes subsidies, taxes, and requirements. Unfortunately, we rarely see this at large scales due to multiple factors as discussed in previous videos. From a plan's perspective, decarbonization operations can be broken down into multiple areas. These include electrical power, transportation, and industrial processing. And these can be broken down further into multiple categories where costs are estimated for each. Also, each of these categories can be broken down into cases where the green option costs less and where it costs more and government intervention is needed. A plan that prevents runaway climate change would need to support R&D that determines how to reflect sunlight at reasonable costs and without harm. This R&D would cost little relative to other climate costs. 
Sunlight involves the entire planet, not just one nation. Therefore, a national climate plan would need to specify what share of global total is covered by that nation. For example, if total operations is $30 billion per year and the U.S. paid half, then the U.S. would pay $15 billion annually. And this would show up in the reflecting sunlight operations row of the summary budget table. To understand the challenge we face, it helps to look at the size of the problem. We already know how much energy the world consumes each year. And we also know how much energy a single large facility like Hoover Dam can produce annually. To get a sense of problem size, we can divide these two numbers to calculate how many Hoover Dam equivalents would be needed to replace global energy. The math works out to roughly 17,000 Hoover Dam equivalents. That's how much construction would be needed worldwide spread out over several decades. Currently, green energy construction activity does not come close to this. So the question is, how do we handle a problem of this size? It is possible, perhaps probable, the only solution is additional R&D to the extent required to drive down the cost of 24-7 green energy to below that of fossil fuel. Yet if this cost reduction did occur, what might happen next? To get a better sense of this, let's look at an example case. In 2024, China faced a coal shortage that drove up the price of coal-based electricity. At one point, it cost roughly twice as much as electricity from solar farms. To reduce coal demand, lower coal prices, and save money, the Chinese built an astonishing 280 gigawatts of solar power in one year. For perspective, one watt of nuclear power produces the same amount of electricity as four watts of solar power over a year. This is because solar is good for roughly six hours a day, while nuclear supports 24. Therefore, electricity production from 280 gigawatts of solar is similar to that of 70 gigawatts of nuclear. Now, compare that to the United States, which built only three gigawatts of nuclear power over the last 30 years. In other words, China built 25 times more nuclear power equivalents in one year than what the U.S. did over 30 years. China's solar construction spree shows us that speed and scale are possible, even likely, when green energy costs less than carbon-based energy. And a surge of R&D in key areas could theoretically make this happen. Key areas include nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, geothermal, and solar. One might be discouraged by the fact that many lawmakers are not willing to spend much money on climate. However, one can argue this is not a problem. This is because many of the things we typically do for climate are either too small to matter or they are not cost effective and therefore not helpful or not scalable. Instead, we need to put relatively little money in key areas. In other words, do more for less. And a plan generation website that estimates global outcome given plan would help identify these areas and help waste less money. Okay, that's it for me, and I'll talk to y'all real soon.